Hello all, welcome to the third in my series of using aluminium profile extrusion in the workshop. In this one, I'm going to be using the extrusion to make a drill stand, one that goes reliably straight up and down, no unwanted flex. That can be free mounted, i.e. taken to the work, and also mounted to a base with a fence. Plus, I'd like it to serve as a mount for my milling motor, so a router bit can sit up front for surfacing. The entire build will be over two parts. In this, part one, I'll concentrate on constructing the main drill stand itself, and in part two, I'll make the base and demonstrate it in use more thoroughly. I've had making this on my mind for some time, as I've had these 300mm linear rails just hanging around, but I didn't, at the point you see me rummaging around through one of my bits boxes here, have a design or a plan. The plan was simply to make a drill go straight up and down using parts I had to hand. Thankfully, having gone through three iterations of my over router machine, I have quite a lot of bits to select from. Not least, these pieces of 2080 extrusion. The aluminium plates I've dug out here I won't end up using, but I will be doubling up the linear rail bearings. Anytime I ordered a linear rail, I would buy them with a bearing block and a spare to give me the option of doubling up. Two years these have sat in the parts box, so glad to finally put them to use. First things first then, getting the extra bearing blocks on the rails. If you're new to these, take care when you open them. You'll notice they have a dummy piece of rail slotted into the block. This is to keep the bearings in place. If you pull that out, it's likely you'll have tens of tiny bearings all over the bench. Keep the dummy rail on, then line it up with the rail proper. Then carefully move the bearing block onto the rail. I tend to keep hold of the dummy plastic rail as they're useful when it comes to time for servicing. Next task is fixing the two 2080 extrusions perpendicular to each other. As a bonus, I found four of these black aluminium corner brackets from my Mark I overbouter. These will do the job, partially, and help the build look somewhat, scare quote, professional. If you've watched any of my other profile extrusion builds, you'll know now that it all gets locked together with 8mm M5 flat hex bolts and flat sliding T-nuts. Always advisable to fit these first, leaving loose, then slide into the profile slot. It can be fiddly lining up the T-nuts to slide on, but less so than trying to position holes, bolts and brackets as you go. For the purposes of demonstration, you can see the sliding T-nuts there to receive the upright profile. A bracket will be the other side before fitting in anger. Slid on and standing squarish, the bolts can be cinched. This gets much more attention later. Like the extrusion parts, the linear rails are attached with bolts and sliding T-nuts too. This time, tiny M3 ones. The rails are counterboard to hide the bolt head, so it's handy to hold it in place with an allen while screwing on the T-nut. Here I've got the first linear rail on. You don't need to watch me wrestling these things into place over and over. Still loose, I position the bottom of it central to the slot, then lightly tighten the bottom screw. With that as a pivot point, I zero the level box to the base, and set the first rail at 90 degrees to it. When it's in 90 degree position, I start tightening the bolts from the top, checking for 90 as I go down. I then slide on the second rail, but leave it loose. Next job is to make a plate to fix to the bearings and also host a drill mount. If you buy any fresh alley plate, don't assume its edges are square by the way. They almost always aren't. This piece certainly isn't, as I use it to make a bunch of curved parts. Quick jot down of the hole locations. Layout time. I just use an awl and scratch out the lines. And here's what I end up with. A grid for the bearing blocks and a large square for the drill mount. Centre punched at the crossover, it's drill time. I start off with a 1.5mm bit, then work up to 4mm for the M3 bearing bolts and 6mm for the M5 drill mount bolts. Quick deburr of the holes to keep the plate flat means no weird surprises when levelling later. So here you can see me squaring the plate to the rails, but I should explain there was a process here and what you're seeing is just the final part. You'll remember only the left rail was fixed and set at 90 to the base, the right side left loose. I used the same fixing method as on the right side rail for the left, setting a pivot screw first, but this time using the plate attached to the bearings to set the right rail position, sliding the plate along incrementally as I fix the screws. What I'm doing here is loosening the plate one final time, checked it square to both rails, then tightening the blocks again. This just takes the stress out of the bearing fixing nuts from the tightening of the right side rail. You'll get a drag effect or sticking if you don't do this. This, if you've seen my routing machine and the turning attachment I have for it, you'll recognise. It's an open build motor mount. They come with a number of pre-tapped M5 mounting holes. I'm using two on the top and bottom with good quality corner brackets. I set them in place on a flat granite reference. It was after preparing the motor mount that it occurred to me that drilling through holes in the plate wasn't going to work to attach it. No room for nuts the other side. 
Thankfully, I've left enough room on the plate to drill and tap another four holes for the mount. Tapped holes ready, it can be attached. I'll make micro adjustments later, but to get me in the ballpark, I set its flat sides to a square, referenced off the plate. At the mitre saw here is a piece of 2020 profile getting a 45 mitre each end. This will form a diagonal brace to keep the drill stand rigid. Again fixed in place with more of these corner brackets. Cinched down, it made the whole thing super rigid. Note that when I'm fixing the brackets to the base, that it's clamped to the flat granite, ensuring no sticky outy bits on the bottom. This little offcut of 2040 profile, I'm drilling out to prepare it for its new job as part of a depth stop. You can see the hole I drilled there exposes the steel rod. A thumb screw goes through a sliding tina and will tighten against the rod to lock it. One end of the rod there, you can see the blue around the thread of the screw. This is Loctite I had set overnight. The screw will be a micro adjust and the Loctite, once you've broken its grip, takes any play out of the thread, keeping it stiff and set where you want it. Here's the thumb screw and T-nut. Locate the hole in the profile to position it and once located, a quarter turn will lock or unlock. Already set in place is a corner bracket that will serve as a rest for the depth stop and above there's two absolutely beasted holes to mount the depth stop itself. Using drop in T-nuts to fix the depth stop, given away by my not needing to slide it on. Not sure why, likely because I was getting low on the sliding T's I need for other things. I've got the thing topped out here and you can see there's not enough on the depth stop rod. I could move the actual stop up, but the rod itself I poached from the kit for this Banggood drill guide. They have a thread end and a tapped end, so just screw into each other, allowing me to extend my depth stop. Not sure under what circumstances I would use this much extension, but the option's there. The Banggood drill guide is alright by the way, I've just found it's best for lighter work. What I'm making here I'm hoping will be just as happy applying good downward pressure to much larger bits. Final setup and I've loosened some of the screws fixing the upright, including the diagonal. The milling motor has a centering pin in the collet. As before, level box zero to the surface and then set against the pin. I then tweak back and forth until it rests at 90 degrees, then lock off. Much easier to say than do, the reality is I spent a good 40 minutes on this. Worth it when you see an end result like this though. Perfect 90 to zero in both left and right, back and front orientations. Before I do a couple of finishing touches and call part one a day, I couldn't resist but do a test hole. I'm actually awaiting a new old drill. This old Black & Decker one has no speed control, but more importantly, its chuck no longer locks properly. You just saw the bit slip there, but it works enough for a test. I can certainly say I'm happy with how it feels. Very solid and feels much more straight up and down than any drill stand or guide I've used before. Got one of the steel rods against the square there just to check it's straight. Being 6mm and a fraction diameter into a 6mm drilled hole, it's a tight fit and hopefully stands up straight. I was well prepared to go through this whole setting process with the level box again if not. I do actually want to use this thing for work, not just for a YT vid, you know what I mean? No light bleed through, looks good eh? A couple of finishing touches to the drill stand then, starting with this. It's a scrap piece of alley plate, pre-drilled so I must have used it as a bracket at some point, and a little M5 thumb screw. Several of the little holes in the profile I've pre-tapped some time ago, so this will screw right in. All this does is give me a sort of flip stop to hold the drill up and out of the way when needed. The final touch is to add a handle to the motor mount. As I mentioned earlier, these open build mounts have M5 tapped holes all around and I'll be using the two on the side there. This bit of plate I cut and drilled for the task for best fit. Two 20mm M5 screws with an M6 nut over them between the plate and the mount to act as a standoff. The hole in the centre I drilled and tapped for M10 to accept this angle grinder handle. I've upgraded my Bosch grinder handle to the fancy shock absorbing one so it won't be missed. The thread goes right through the plate, hence the need for the standoffs. A sneaky peek there of the base for the drill stand I'll cover in part 2. In part 2 I'll also do more comprehensive drilling tests to review too. I did manage to do a quick test of using the stand as a surface router. With the surfacing bit installed, I use a granite reference to set it up making sure everything's in planar. The reason I want this ability is, on my coffee tables, I like to include a natural character in the wood. A bookmatched knot say, and this will get a resin fill. I won't run it through the planer as I don't want to contaminate my chippings as they go to animals. Neither is it always feasible to surface on my routing machine. And, if you try and just sand a resin blob away, you'll end up creating unwanted pits and troughs in the surrounding wood. This surfacing router should knock the tops off resin blobs without affecting the surrounding wood and making finished sanding a breeze. Do I need to tell you that you need to handle something like this with care? 
I use routers every day, know each of my machines well, and I'm comfortable using this particular one in this way. If you're not, or have any doubts, don't. That said though, thanks for its large base for me to rest on, and the general weight and stability of the thing, it actually handled very well. I should say before going that this drill stand is not a cost saving exercise, like a lot of woodworking workshop builds tend to be. It was a cost saving exercise for me, as I already had the parts, but if you were to buy them especially for this, it'd be quite expensive. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, this series is more of a technical exercise, practical demonstrations of using profile extrusion in a workshop. Personally, I love how non-committal the stuff is. If your needs change, or what you made isn't working, dismantle, and you have a collection of parts to try something else. It's pretty cool, I think. That'll do it for part one then, I think. I'll hopefully get part two done for next week, where I'll make the base for the drill stand and feature some more in-use stuff. Comments and questions welcome below. I'll link to some parts in the description, likely via Ruse Nest. Like if you did, sub if you aren't already, and as always, if you made it this far, Thanks for watching.